Howdy hackers and welcome to another episode of Fairlight TV. This should be episode number five. This is the practice block of... Uh, and in order to gain the full benefit of this one, you should actually watch the episode four where I go through the theory of compression, run, run length encoding and uh, sequence crunching being the two methodologies that you should be aware of before you see this one. Uh, but feel free to jump in, and if you realize that he's talking about stuff I don't know, then watch episode 4, and you will probably have the explanation for what I reference here. So, when you look at the crack of a game, uh, it's basically peeling an onion, so uh, when you produce it, you need to <laughs> apply them in the, in the reverse order. Uh, so we will go from the inner core of the onion and add the layers outside. So the inner core is the deep protected chunk of memory, which is the, the, the game file. This is typically like a 250 block file or, or even more. It could go from like 0400 all the way up to uh, FFFF, like the full extent of the memory. And that's, that's a chunk of memory which is very hard to handle. So in order to add your intro, you need to create space to add an intro. And what you did was basically run, an, uh, run, uh, run length encoding on top of that. So you would pack the main data file into something smaller and then you would apply your intro and then the resulting file after adding the intro you would crunch using a sequence cruncher. So playing it or you would see first the the sequence cruncher depacking, the intro running and then the run length encode uh, the packer depacking the run length encoded program. And then the program, and then the game would run. Uh, and this is how you would apply it normally uh, in that order. I know times have changed. I haven't, but uh, but times have changed. But I will get back to that in, in a few seconds. Uh, so why run length encoding? Why did we do that? Well, first of all. The, the main reason it was already described, you need something which is in a manageable size before you can apply your intro on top of it, because you couldn't uh, apply uh, an intro of any size if the file is from 0400 to FFFF. There is simply no place in memory to show uh, any screen, for instance. So you needed to pack it. Uh, the other part is that crunchers took forever Right. So even if you had a, a program where you could apply the intro without any interference and it would still be a program of the size which you can actually feed to the cruncher and it would be able to handle that size of a program. Uh, if you would feed it something which was like 30, 40 blocks smaller, it could take an hour shorter. Uh, for a program such as Cruel Crunch, chewing on, on anything you feed it, fed it with, it could easily take like eight, 10 hours all night and even more than that. So RLE Packer saved a lot of crunching times as well. Uh, and back in the days, you couldn't crunch twice. So if you took the main game, crunched it, added an intro and then run a cruncher again, the crunching of, a, of already crunched data would be so inefficient that it would actually grow from the second crunching. I know a number of groups had very, very small intros, so you could take crunched data, add the intro, and then not pack it at all afterwards. That's one way of doing it. I'm not uh, really in favor of that. I would like to crunch the biggest chunk of data I could to ensure I have sort of as much data as possible because if the cruncher has more data to work with it can produce a better result because it's crunching good based on the data it's fed with. Uh, today um, yeah, things changed. Uh, Examizer which is sort of the go-to uh, solution for crunching today has a concept of literals. So it scans the, the source file and if it finds a big chunk of data it can't do anything about, that is referenced as the literal and then it's basically skipping that 
again, that's my understanding. I, Magnus Lind coded Examizer, I didn't. So this is, again, my interpretation of how Examizer works. So today you can actually totally forget about the RLE and, and you can use uh, Examizer to crunch, add your intro and then uh, then exomize again on the on the on the file which is pack plus intro it, it will still do a good a good job with it unless your intro is really small uh, I'm an old school kind of guy so I do my RLE packing and then I add my intro and then do exomizer crunching afterwards I know that people could show me that uh, it's no no benefit of doing it you could easily uh, do your exomizer twice I still don't do it uh, I do it like I did in the 80s uh, so this is for single file games now we're going to add the dimension that the single file game is also loading levels and and here we go into the concept of crunching without adding the depacker so if you if you are doing the main file you are crunching and adding a depacker but level crunching is just crunching and then feeding the data to the disk so you have a crunch crunched set of data uh, inside your main file again so this is before you started building the extra layers of the onion if you need to this needs to be in the in the core of that onion you need to have a loader system that loads the level files and the way hackers loaders work is that they are basically a decruncher where the get byte routine from the decruncher is also calling uh, the get byte routine from disk so it it loads data from disk and transparently also decrunches it into where it's going in memory it's, it's a very, very handy way because uh, you don't need any loading buffers. You don't need to load it in one place and then decrunch it because that's, that space is simply not available if you're retrofitting uh, a game uh, with this kind of a, of, a, of a loader. So it loads faster and the data on the disk is really, really small. So that's how you apply level crunching. Uh, then there are a number of different level crunchers, of course, but uh, again, the, the predominant one is Examizer, and now everybody's using like, Examizer 3 because that is what compresses best. Uh, but you can use basically any loader technology um, to, to and combine that with the level cruncher and make a package that works. Um, I have also personally used the combination of uh, level using the level D cruncher where the get byte routine fetches either from the RAM expansion unit or directly from, from memory. If you search CSDB for my crack of a Polish game called Birds, it's a one file. Everybody else did seven files. I did basically an IFFL implementation that I could store in memory. And then my decruncher called get byte uh, and fetched from the area of memory that was unused for throughout the game. So I can I could load uh, the crunch level without even accessing the disk. That was a super efficient way. But I ran into the issue of crunching something that was already crunched. Mm, well, small penalty because. Uh, I still ha only had one file and people thought I forgot about adding the level files, but they were there. Um, I also produced a version of Alternate Reality The City, where I took the entire chunk of levels and fed them to the RAM expansion unit. Uh, and if you have a RAM expansion unit, uh, then that could be used. And um, then I decrunched with a get byte routine that fetched from the RAM expansion unit. Okay, so that is how you use uh, run length encoding and sequence crunching in cracking of today. If you want to learn more of the tricks of the trade of cracking the C64 games, then please subscribe and also press the little bell button so you don't forget. Or, well, the system will tell you when we have new materials available for you. And after doing this, how about ordering one of those t-shirts?
aren't they nice? Redbubble.com to order the Fairlight props. See you in the next one.